So we've driven up uh, just a couple of miles from the Waterbury Dam and we're now in Little River State Park. Even though uh, this is a forested area today, in the 19th century this land was largely cleared and there were a series of settlements and hill farms here. So hiking through the woods today we can still find evidence of past land use and these hill farms that existed here. So now Walt and I are going to head up the trail and we're going to start right here in the middle of the state park and we're going to hike up to the hill farm and then we're going to eventually make our way up to Gideon Rickard's farm. What they call the history hike here at Little River State Park. Oh, I'm psyched to be going up here, Chris. I, I first came to this site back in 1994, I remember, and I was had a chance to visit all these historic farmsteads that just looked like forest to me at the time. But when you look closely, you can start seeing the clues of human imprint on the place through time. It's a great spot for reading the forested landscape. It's really interesting to try to visualize what it would have looked like here in the middle of the 19th century. So we're just a little ways up the history hike here and we're at, now at the site of the David Hill Farm. This farm was developed sometime in the middle of the 1820s and there's really not a lot to see here, at least from the untrained eye. Right here, there's, a, there's remnants of an old stone wall and one of the cool features here is that there's also daylilies that are still here, dating all the way back, presumably, to when this was a working farmstead. Uh, but you can look across this area and start to pick out more evidence of, of this farmstead and what life would have been like here. So we're going to ask Walt to help us interpret what we see. The David Hill Farm at this first part of the history hike is really a great spot to practice doing some detective work where we try to read the forested landscape. And the clues generally fall into two main categories. One of them is the vegetation of a site both the composition and then the structure of the forest that's growing up. So that's a big part of it. The other thing is actually physical features on the landscape that have endured through time, and particularly stoneworks. And uh, here we are at a spot, it might just look like a hole in the ground right here, but if you look carefully at this area, the size and the shape of it, it's a rectangular uh, hole in the ground, uh, essentially. And if you look around the sides, below all these leaves and things that are rotting here, you can start to see that there's actually a, a large pile of rocks right here. Stones that are of all kind of the same size. And then if you went along the edge of this, you could see the old uh, stoneworks, which were really the foundation of a building. And this was an early settler cabin. Uh, I think the David Hill Farm represents one of the early sites in the 1820s. We know it's been abandoned for a long time because of this beautiful yellow birch that's growing right out of the foundation. Actually, the earliest settlers, they didn't even bother uh, to uh, dig holes and foundations for their cabins. They just kind of built them at the surface. But when farming really started to take hold, and these were subsistence farms, people needed a place to store essentially root crops and things over the winter time. And so the foundation of the house went down four to six feet below the frost line, and it would serve as a place not only to store food items, but it also provided a foundation for the house which would sit right on top. And so it was important to be down below that frost-free zone where it was not freezing, but it was very cool. And as we look at a, several of these, uh, this is probably the most subtle one, but as we head up into the forest and we look at the other homesteads, we'll be able to see the structure much more intact. This one is crumbled quite a bit, but I do notice that there is a pile of stones right here and this is very likely where the chimney was. The foundation for the chimney uh, that has collapsed through time went up through the center of the house and then the rooms were on either side. And the front door, of course, opened up to here to where the road is. So you look at the, the, uh, the stonework, but then you look at the vegetation associated with the stonework. And I can already see right here on the corner, even though it's October, the bright green foliage of a non-native species here is honeysuckle that somebody you know, one of the inhabitants of this house, the family that was here planted to beautify the house as it looked out onto the, the roadway here. So honeysuckles and daylilies are an example of that. And then I think over here, uh, they actually had some lilacs planted. All right, well, hopefully we can find this lilac. It was here last time. Ah, I think I do see some remnants. 
Yeah, sure enough. All right, well, we found a lilac here, and uh, this is a, just another great example of people beautifying their landscape uh, where their house was, just like we all do in our neighborhoods and, and around our homes. Lilacs and honeysuckles are just incredible because they're, they're woody plants, and they can persist for a long time. And I think people know people plant lilacs because they bloom right around Mother's Day in that beautiful sort of light bluish purple uh, foliage. And they're just an example of uh, a sign that people once lived here and cared about this place. And uh, hopefully that'll continue to persist for a while. And I think of this together with apple trees and a butternut tree that I could see down over there. Those, of course, are used for food um, and cider making, but uh, the lilac really had no other purpose other than to make it more beautiful. If you don't mind, I've got a little song uh, about this site written by Kate Wolf. that's all about uh, a lilac talking to an apple tree on a site just like this. A lilac bush and an apple tree were standing in the woods All up on a hill above the town where once a farmhouse stood in the winter the trees are bare and no one sees the sign of a house that stood and a garden that grew on life in another time. One spring when the buds came bursting forth and grass grew on the land, the lilac spoke to the apple tree as only an old friend can. Do you think, said the lilac, this might be the year when someone will build here once more? Here by the cellar, still open and deep, there's room for new walls and a floor. Oh no, said the apple, there are so few who come here on the mountain this way. And when they do, they don't often see why we're growing here so far away. A long time ago we were planted by hands that worked in the mines and the hills. When the country was young and the people who came built their homes in the hills. Oh, now there are cities, the roads have come, and no one lives here today. And the only sign of the farms in the hills are the things not carried away. Broken dishes, piles of boards, a tin plate, an old leather shoe, and an apple tree still bending down, and a lilac where a garden once grew.